Good morning. Thank you for joining me on replay. I want to welcome you to uh, Morning Inspirations. And uh, if you live in Virginia, I want to say congratulations. I almost wish I lived in Virginia this morning. So um, wait for some people to sign on live and we'll get started. The Lord has put a scripture on my heart and I'm going to read it. Uh, I'm not sure where we're going from there, but I, I know God knows and so I'm trusting him. Good morning, Joe Macy. Appreciate you joining me, brother. And uh, congratulations to Governor Yunkin. Um, it's an uh, awesome, awesome time. Good morning, good morning. Um, while we're waiting, I want to say this. I know a lot of people get rubbed the wrong way when a preacher uh, speaks on political issues as if we're not supposed to. But the bottom line is this, the word of God applies in every area of our life, in every aspect of our life. And one problem we have today with so-called Christians, and I say so-called, is because there's people that want to have the title of a Christian for whatever reason. You know, some because they want people to think something of them, some because they just want this false security that they're a Christian. But unless you're a follower of Christ, Unless you've been born again and you follow Jesus Christ, you need to check yourself. The Bible said, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Now, what we see happening in our country is we see a, a distortion of truth. We see mass hatred. As a matter of fact, one reason we have the president we have, in my opinion, is because people hated Trump so bad they voted for him. I, but that's what, that's what we got now. That's what we have. And when I see, uh, woke up this morning, there's two things that made my day. Uh, the Braves winning. I'm an Atlanta Braves fan, always have been. I like the Cubs too, but I, I really have always been a Braves fan. But um, that, and then the fact that Virginia, the woke movement, woke up the people of Virginia and not in the way they wanted to. See, people are fed up with stuff being shoved down their throat. Critical race theory, the ignorance of that the transgender uh, deal that went down in Loudoun County or in the school where uh, it ended up being an assault um, that happened in the bathroom. And who, who would have thought that would happen? People with common sense, people that, that understand common sense and logic. And see what's happened in our country is we've gotten to a place where the, the minority, which is the loudest, the, 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 the wicked minority, are so loud that the majority have been silent. And it's time that we stand together. And I want to read this to you. Like I said, I don't know how this applies, but uh, God will pull it together while I'm going to read to you because this is the scripture you put on my heart. This is what I'm going to read. But I will not back down. I will not shy away from certain subjects. If, if, the, if the word of God applies and it applies in every aspect of our life, I'm going to speak on it. And if you don't like it, uh, I, I don't want, I'm, I'm not trying to offend you. But if you are offended by the word of God, I pray that you repent and get right with God. Because there's something coming called that day, the judgment. Jesus is about to return. And when that happens, there's two, two powerful things that happen at one time. A great blessing and a great judgment. The great blessing is all of us that are faithful and true and love God and look for his return, we're blessed because we're out of here. We're carried up with him. Those that have died, that are in Christ will come up out of the graves. The Bible says there will be a great shout, the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in air and forever and will be changed in a moment to an eye and forever be with the Lord. That's, that's about to happen. You say, when's that going to happen? The Bible says no man knows, but God has a time when he's going to send his son, Christ, to come and get us. And that's a great blessing. That's such a great hope and assurance. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, comfort one another with those words. But at the same time, that's a great blessing. It's also a great judgment that's going to fall. The wrath of God will begin and on this country, on this world. And, and people that are playing church, people that are running under the, the, the flag of, I'm a Christian, but you support abortion, you support transgender, you support homosexuality, you support wickedness, uh, you support, uh, I could go on and on and on. 
you support that, but yet you claim to be a Christian. You'll, you will face the wrath and judgment of God. And people that are claiming to be a preacher or a teacher and proclaiming uh, a false gospel and misleading will suffer the wrath and judgment of God. I don't say that with a, 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 a joy. I say that with a terrible fear because I fear God. And I know that God's word is true. The Bible says, be still. God said, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. God is going to be exalted. For you, you that are just joining, I woke up this morning and was almost, almost wished I was, I lived in Virginia. I love North Carolina. I love the South. The further South I go, the happier I am. So I got good friends in Virginia. I know they're happy today. I almost wish I lived in Virginia because of what happened with the, uh, gov the governor, Governor Youngkin. I'm going to call him governor. He's got voted in. It tickles me to death because you have this evil, wicked agenda that's pushing pushing, pushing, pushing. And they think because they're so loud and they're so pushy that people are just going to bow and do what they want to do. But there is a remnant in this country. There are some true children of God that will stand up against the evil. And Ephesians 6, 13 tells us we are to stand and join together. And speaking of standing, Friday, right here in Bladenboro, Friday at 7 p.m., we're going to stand in Bladenboro. We're going to stand up for, the, for Christ. We're going to stand against evil. And we're going to unite together. And if you can be there, you join us. I pray we can go live. I hope we can go live so you can join us there if you can't make it. But we're going to stand. And we already have an invitation to go to Sampson County. We'll be in the Expo Center in December. It's already been secured. Someone is at uh, Expo Center. Uh, the, everything's lined up. So we're going to Sampson County. So God is lining us up. Why? Because God wants us to stand in the evil day. God wants us to repent and turn from our wickedness, our evil, and then stand for him. I'm glad, I'm so thankful that God moved in Virginia and answered the prayers of many people. And I pray that he does the same thing in my state, in your state, and in our country. Because whether you like it or not, whether you want to admit it or not, it's not Democrat and Republican. It's good and evil. That's what we're facing in our world today. It's not about a political party. Political parties are gone. It, there was a time when I grew up, the Democratic Party was the party. They, they were the party for farmers. They were the party for uh, the rural people. But it's been hijacked. The Republican Party, they've got their issues. I, you know, again, but what it comes down to is what do you believe? What does the Word of God teach? What do we believe? What do we stand for? I stand for Jesus Christ. If that's in the face of a Republican, then I stand for Jesus Christ. If it's in the face of a Democrat, I stand for Jesus Christ. But if we don't start making a stand and being vocal and saying, look, this is what I believe. I'm not ashamed of God. I'm not ashamed of the way I was raised. I'm not ashamed of uh, that I believe a family should be a family, uh, that marriage is between a man and a woman. I'm not ashamed to say that. I'm not ashamed to say that uh, there's a lot of things. Don't let me get in the flesh, Lord. That's why I'm very careful. I don't want to get in the flesh. Let me go to the Word of God. Matthew, I want to read Matthew, the 13th chapter. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Let me see here. Y'all pray for me. All right, you ready? If you're ready, say, I'm ready. I'm ready. Ready for the Word of God. Matthew, the 13th chapter, I want to start reading, verse 38. Then certain of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall be no sign given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall... The men of Nineveh shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented. They didn't repent. They repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, there's a greater than Jonah here. What was Jesus talking about? Jonah didn't do any miracles. Jonah wasn't walking around proclaiming to be this great prophet of God. You know what Jonah? Jonah run and hid because he did not want to preach to those wicked, vile sinners. He didn't want to have anything to do with them. And he ran. 
Some of you, many of you know the story. God dealt with him in a severe way, and he ended up being swallowed up by a whale or a great fish and was coughed out on the beach. And when he hit the beach, he was running. And he ran right to Nineveh, and he preached a simple message, repent, repent. And Jesus is saying, there's a greater than Jonah here. The Son of God came, and he's saying, repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven has come to you. And the same is true to this day. He has come. And the Holy Spirit is here to dealing with hearts and convicting. And he's telling the church, repent. Turn from wickedness. Turn from politics. Turn from, turn from worrying about your stupid wallet and what your 401k says. That, that your family will fight over when you're already dead and gone. Look for the things that last. Look to the eternal things. Kindness, meekness, good, joy, long-suffering. Preach the gospel. Stand on the truth. People say, well, you know, you don't need to offend people because that's not of Jesus. I don't know what Jesus you read about in the Bible. But Jesus' presence was an offense to religious people. They didn't like him. He was greatly offended at things that went on and stood and was vocal about it. He stood the truth. Jesus says, I am the truth. I'm the truth. He's, he's the way, the truth, and the life. He answered in a spiritual thing. He answered spiritually to people that were talking carnally. You know, the Pilate says, are you, do you, are you a king? He says, you say that I am. Jesus had a way of answering. But he stood on the truth. And I think today that we need to start answering in spiritual ways. We don't need to come from the flesh. And I, it's hard. It's hard not to really get in the flesh. I, it really is. But we have to understand that my enemy is not a person on this, on this planet. My enemy is not a human. My enemy is a demonic spirit. My enemy is Satan. That's the enemy of our, that comes against us. And he uses people that are lost. He uses people that are deceived. And then he uses some that have fallen from, 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 from grace and started thinking, well, I'm not going to follow Christ. I'm going to follow this. I'm going to follow that. We have to follow Jesus Christ to have the wisdom of God. There's a movement in this country, and it started. It's already started. And that movement is for Christians to unite and stand together. And we're to unite and, and we're to repent. That's where we mess up when we say, well, this is something we're going to do. It's, we're going to have a good time. We're going to rally together, man. We're going to really show this. We're going really, to really show that. That's the wrong heart. That's the wrong spirit. We need to repent of our sins, our complacency, our apathy toward the things of God, our lack of serving God. Our, the idolatry in our lives, the things that we put before God, the, the lack of compassion for the lost, the, the not reaching the lost and thinking it's the preacher's job or some super spiritual person in your church's job to reach the lost. It's our job. It's everybody's job. And one reason we don't do that is because we're not right with God. We don't pray. We don't get along with God. We don't, we don't stay in his word. And one reason so many people are just mixed up and don't understand what's going on in our country is because they don't know the truth. They don't have the wisdom of God. They have the wisdom of this world. It amazes me to read the, the secular news and their report on why uh, Yunkin was elected governor. It amazes me because they'll say stuff like, well, you know, uh, we, not, we got to rethink everything and and." And, and it's, they, they always want to pull back to Trump. They always want to put, listen, people are fed up with stupidity. They're fed up with ignorance. They're fed up with wickedness. And I believe that's what it's going to take for the church to unite. It's going to take persecution. It's going to take people being pushed and pushed and pushed till they finally say, you know what, I've got to stand up now. But wouldn't it be awesome? If we stood up before that happened, if we just said, you know what, we're going to stand because God says stand. We're going to do what's right because his word is true. And every man, let every man be a liar because the word of God is true and forever settled in heaven. That's the word we'll be judged on. That's what I'll be judged on. That's what you will be judged on, the word of God. Jonah said, repent. And when the wickedest societies in the world experienced the greatest revival in the history of the world, America can experience the greatest revival in our history if the church, the church, would repent and say, Lord, forgive me. I put my hopes in a politician. I put my hopes in a political party. I put my hopes in what people think of me. I put my hopes in materialism. But God, I repent. I put my hope in Jesus Christ, who says he's going to step out on that cloud one day and shout and the voice of the archangel, and then the trump of God will sound, and we'll be out of here. 
Now, I know some people don't believe that. I understand. But the Word of God says it, and it's true. I don't know if this is encouraging you or inspiring you today, but I hope that it does inspire you to believe that God is not, has not lost control. God is still in control. God sets up kingdoms. God sets up kings. What happened in Virginia? The move of God. Bottom line. God puts who he wants. By the way, Biden being where he's at, it's a move of God. God judges. When God sees us put our faith in things that we shouldn't put our faith in and make something an idol, it's, he has to chastise. He has to correct because he loves us. Regardless of how this message is hitting you today, I can tell you this, until we get a pure heart, and I'm not there, but until we get a pure heart and say, God, help me to see things as you see them. Help me to see myself as you see me. Help me to treat people the way I'm supposed to treat them. And God, give me the grace and the boldness to stand in this evil day. Until we get to that point, we're gonna struggle. We're gonna struggle. We're gonna struggle. Because in you is a war. If you're a child of God, there's a war. The old man, the flesh, is still there. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. You're made a new creation in Christ Jesus. But there's a war. And that war is that, that your, your spirit. The Holy Spirit's dealing in you and your spirit. The Bible says he de, he, the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we're the sons of God, daughters of God, children of God. But there's also our flesh that says, I want to do this, I want to do that. And so there's a battle. And the devil understands our flesh and our feelings and our desires and temptation greater than we'll ever understand. He's been doing it for thousands of years. He understands what he's doing. And the only way we can overcome evil and wickedness is to get right with God, to get right with him. And when we get right with him, he can fill us with his spirit. He can empower us and use us mightily for his glory and his namesake. And that is my hope for you. That's my hope for everyone in this country. That's my hope for around the world, that we'll see a mighty move of God, the Holy Spirit of God move in such a way that churches will realize, look, it's never been about my building. It's never been about my programs. It's never been about what we do here. But it's about, it's about what's out there. It's about the people that are out there that don't know Christ. It's about bringing the hope of glory to them. Never been about politics. Never been about all that. But yet we can't shy away from wickedness. We can't hide and say, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to offend. We have to stand up for the truth and say, thus saith the Lord. He's called me to be an evangelist. That's my job. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. The time, the time shall come, but they will not endure sound doctrine, but they'll heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. If you want to build a big ministry, it's been proven. Tell people what they want to hear. If you want to be persecuted and stand for Christ and suffer for his namesake, preach the truth. There, 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 there's, no, there's no gray area. And we have to understand as, as children of God that when it comes down to what's happening in our country, that if we don't stand up and be bold and say, you know what, I know we're friends. I know we went to school together. I know how you feel. Whatever. I understand. But the Word says this. The Bible says this. You can't, you can't hide from that. You can't say, well, I'm at work. I don't want my coworkers to be upset with me and my boss might fire me. He's going to judge you. He's going to judge you for what you say and, and do in, this, in your body. We have to understand. We are facing the return of Jesus Christ. It's imminent. It's coming. And I woke up this morning, and like I said, I almost wish I was in Virginia today to celebrate because I saw the attack on the family. I saw the attack on our, their children. I saw the demonic move from a wicked agenda to tell moms and dads they have no say-so over their children's right or what they learn in school. Let me tell you something, they're teaching some filth in school as Governor or Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson said. They're teaching some filth. There's some filth. And if we don't get bold, if we don't stand, not only will we see things get worse, but we will face judgment for that. We will answer to God for that. I don't say any of this with, with joy. I'm not, I'm not like that. I'm not, I, I don't like to preach. I want to talk about something really, you know, positive. But listen, the truth of the matter is the Word of God is what we need. We need to stand on the Word of God. It's a sharp two-edged sword piercing asunder and dividing even soul and spirit. 
the Word of God will pierce right into the soul and will hit dead where it's supposed to hit. If somebody argues with you and says, well, this is what I think, say, you know, I appreciate what you think, but the Bible says this. People ask me all the time, what do you think about this? What's your opinion on that? No matter what my opinion is, it doesn't matter what I think, what does the Bible say? Because truthfully, God's Word is alive and it's living, it's eternal. My words are fall short. And I thank God for His eternal Word. I thank, I thank the Lord that He does not change. He's not going to change. This world's changed. This country has changed. In my lifetime, the country has dramatically changed. But God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He will not change. And if his people will stand and say, I'm going to stand for God regardless of the persecution, regardless of the mocking or whatever happens, I'm going to stand for God because I believe this word. I have the spirit of God in me. I will not reject my Savior. I will not reject my Lord. If you'll do that, God will move mightily on your behalf. God will not leave us out to dry. God will not abandon you. He says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And just as Jonah ran through this huge city and said, repent, turn from your evil ways, just as sure as the power of God worked through Jonah and the entire city, starting from the king, commanded a time of repentance, fasting and turning and, and, and just turning from their evil ways, it can happen in America. It can happen in your state. It can happen in your county. It can happen in your town. God's no respecter of persons. It's not about who preached. It's not about Jonah. It's about the people that God was speaking to through this man responding to the word, responding to the warning. It's about you and I. Are we going to respond to God? Are we going to respond to what he's saying? He says, repent. Turn. That's something we don't hear in the churches. We, we don't hear that preached. We, we, we tell sinners to repent. We say, you've got to repent. And they do have to repent. They have to turn from their sins and believe on Jesus Christ. But you know who else has to repent? The slack, lukewarm Christians of today. Jesus, the Bible says in Revelations, he says the church is lukewarm. He says God will spew them out of his mouth. Makes him want to vomit. Listen, please, if you don't hear anything else I say today, Listen to me. Search your hearts. Say, God, search my heart. Show me things that are there that you see that I don't even see. Help me, Lord, to discern what your will is and what I need to do. Make me what you'd have me to be. Give me the power that you have, the power that's available in me. Help, help me to receive that where I can be used of you by simply going through a repentance and saying, God, Cleanse me, fill me, use me for your glory. And he'll do it today. Congratulations to Virginia. Congratulations to uh, the people of Virginia. And uh, my prayer is that the word, people that stand on the word of God, people that have biblical values, will see a movement of God in this country. But you know what? That being said, let me say this, because I know there's some people out there that's probably already upset. You're political. You know what we really need? We need a great revival and awakening in the church. We need the fire of God to fall, just as it did in Elijah's day, to fall and just to show God, God to show himself strong. And the people say, the Lord, he is God, the Lord, he is God. That's what we need. That's what I hope's coming, a mighty move of God. Be blessed today. Um, I pray that something was said to encourage you today. Um, let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our hearts be accepted in His sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen.